Hey everybody, welcome back to Little Eat and Rose, and today we are gonna do a dragon scale 3D cup. And it's not just your average dragon scale, I'm gonna show you like a super easy way to get the scales on your cup. You don't need to use Mod Podge, you don't need to use cardstock. Um, however, if you like the way that cardstock lo looks, you can still use this technique, and what I'm about to show you, you can still use this file for the cut file with the cardstock, uh, but the way that I do it is extremely easy, and you get the exact same look. Um, so we're going to dive into that today. Um, it's going to be extra 3D because I'm going to show you guys how to use a silicone mold to make a 3D image for your cup. Um, we're going to use color shifting paint. Um, it's relatively expensive to buy the color shifting paint unless you use a coupon. So make sure you use your coupon at Hobby Lobby or Michaels to get this. Um, this comes in about five different colors. You get like orange that shifts to yellow, pink that shifts to purple, blue that shifts to green. Is there another one? pink did I say pink that shifts to orange I believe and uh, so that's I chose the blue because I'm girly and I like this one um, and so to complement it in here I'm also going to show you how to glitter onto your uh, cups I'm going to be using a really fun green glitter and a blue glitter and as always some of this tutorial will probably take some left and right turns as we actually get into this cup and I see the design coming to life and I keep adding things and changing it as we go um, I've also got some tools here. You want to use your, you're going to need um, an applicator, a, sil a silicone applicator for your epoxy. These are cleanable. You can use them over and over. Uh, a good pair of tweezers, an X-Acto knife, and a paintbrush. Uh, I've got my torch here ready, my ep epoxy, my mixing uh, stuff for my epoxy. I've got my uh, chemical mask ready to go, my nitrile gloves as well. So we are going to dive right into this. Oh, and you need stencil paper. So you will want a stencil vinyl. You don't want to use regular vinyl. It's not thick enough. You want to use a stencil vinyl. And we will get into that more in detail as we jump into this tutorial. So I'm going to jump off, clean this all up, get ready to start the first process, and we will jump right back in. So we are back. You guys are definitely going to hear my kids in the background. Um, one has already been in here visiting. I will post some of the super cute footage I just got of my daughter giving you guys a tutorial, but that will be on my Facebook page. So if you haven't joined the Facebook page, jump into the drop down menu, the description of this tutorial. I have a link to join my Facebook group. Um, I do a lot of fun stuff in there. I post a lot of like behind the scenes. I do a lot of my repairs. We do a lot of games, get a lot of prizes. We're just super supportive and active. Anyway, that was just cute. My daughter came in and was, she saw all the glitter sitting on the table and got really cute. Um, so here we have the cup. I have sanded it gently. Um, and washed it so it is ready. At this point, doesn't matter if you touch it with bare hands because you're gonna be covering all of this with stickers. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna print out, I will have this file also linked if you're not a member of our Facebook group. This will, I will be adding this to the files of the Facebook group because um, I handmade this one, this file, um, and created this uh, because this is just in my mind how this should be done. I've done quite a few of these the old way and it's t just so tedious and time consuming that you'd have to charge like $200 for the cup and it's just, a, nobody's gonna do that. So what I've done is you can see I have linked, I don't know if you guys, I've got that camera up close, let's see if I can get a good angle on it. I have, there we go. I have linked all the dragon scales together. So they are one strip, so you don't have to individually place. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna start at the bottom and work your way up. Um, I didn't make these super duper long. You're going to have to piece them together as you go. Um, so use stencil vinyl because it's a little bit thicker, so it's going to give you a better 3D effect. It's not going to be quite as extreme as it is with the uh, construction paper that you guys are using or cardstock, uh, but it definitely still gives the effect. And No one has noticed the difference in anybody that I sell it to. Um, and you're just going to take this. Sorry, there's a fuzzy from the carpet on there or my rug and you are gonna place it along the bottom in one strip, okay? Whoop. Then you're gonna turn it over, grab another strip, I don't pre-weed this because it's, it's very time consuming and I know I can just pull the strips off like this as I go. Uh, and so I save just everything with, uh, that I do is just about saving time because with these three little nuggets that I have, they only allow me a certain amount of times of the day to be out here doing this. And so I've got to do it all very quickly. Okay, so then you just take this one, line it up right next to that one, stick it down, and work your way around the tumbler. Ch -ch 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 
And just like that. Now you're going to take your X-Acto knife and cut it. What I do is I cut and I follow the line. Oh, that's not in the screen. Sorry, guys. I'm glad I looked up and checked. So what I do is I see it overlaps just a t touch right here. And I take my X-Acto knife and I follow the line of the scale underneath. And then I hook it and I remove it. So that is how I get those to, sorry, that's not butted up all the way. All right, so that is how I blend it. So now your next one will start there. And now I'm trying to figure out what to do with this. I'm gonna stick that on my little trash pile over there. Okay, so now you'll get your next one started. Sorry, I just wanna show you how to problem solve through where they connect. And then we will zip through this. Because I feel like there's gonna be a lot of questions on um, where they connect and how to layer them. So then what I do is I just offset it just a little bit, not even perfectly. I come right down where the crack is and I lay it. Ooh, that's a little left. I don't lay it directly in the center. I actually lay it slightly off center and wrap it. Now, this is just the way I do it. You guys can lay it right in the center, more to the left, more to the right. That is completely up to you. It's a design call and how you like it. So you can see as I'm layering, you're getting that scale look. Okay, now, um, and that kind of just blends by going over that. That makes that one little that you cut very, very hard to see. Whoops, I just messed that up with my fingernail. Whoop, there we go, flat back down. And once you get this covered in paint and the glitter that I'm gonna show you how to add and where to add it and epoxy, tiny, tiny little things like this are not noticeable. No one will see where the cut line is. And ultimately, this cup is cleaner and looks better than um, most of the cardstock dragon scales. Uh, that I've done because I like the cardstock, but it's a lot harder to get them on there perfect because you're farting around with Mod Podge and all that stuff, and you've got a lot going on. So it's to me, this is just easy. You just line it up, lay it down, and roll it around. You can lift and restick. That is fine. And this one is lining up actually really, really well towards the end, so I might just leave it. I'm not gonna cut it, okay? Press them down really well. You want them to have a good adhesion. So they're gonna look kind of funny because you're gonna see all of them, because it's clear, you can see through it. So it's, you're gonna see all these lines, but once you start painting it and epoxying it, all those lines um, underneath go away. You can't see them. All right, so you guys, I'm gonna work my way up when I get to this point, I'm gonna stop and explain how we're gonna get up and over that hump, and we will be back. All right, we are back and you can see I've got the cup done. So you can see there's a few areas where, I, and you saw in the video quickly as I went through it, that there's a few areas that you kind of have to use a single one to fill in a gap or if you're just one scale away from being closed, you just grab a single scale off a sheet of single scales. I forgot to mention, we'll need this in as well. This is how we're gonna get up and over the hump. So you're gonna hand place your scales going up and over this hump because you'll get too much buckling when you when you try to, sorry, there's a fuzzy. I, and I learned the error of my ways in the middle of that tutorial, in the middle of that filming, I realized this, my big fuzzy rug was just too much for these stickers. Um, normally it doesn't give me any kind of problems, but it was sticking all over these stickers. So I had to switch out and put my short rug down. Um, so we have these little individual ones. We are gonna go in and we are gonna, and oh, what I want to point out is don't worry about them not being perfect. I see people beating their heads against the wall, trying to like make sure they line up perfect. It doesn't matter. Even if you have these little holes right here, like this, 
That's not gonna matter for this. And once you guys get this spray painted and painted, you don't notice those. They're, they just blend in. They'll be gone. You only see them because you're up too close to your project almost. Like, no one else is gonna see them. Um, you can sit and beat your head against a wall, but it's not gonna make too much difference. So for this part, I'm gonna hand letter and I'm gonna work my way up the cup. So this is when it gets a little slow, but at least it's still not uh, cardstock and Mod Podge because whew, that is brutal. Um, ew. And so I, that's why I chose um, uh, this stencil uh, vinyl because it is thicker than cardstock. Um, so it gives, um, a, still does give the definition of the scales, but without the hassle of having to Mod Podge every single scale down. But like I said, if you are an avid Mod Podge user and you think you want more of an, a dramatic effect of scales, you can print the same file out in cards uh, in cardstock and Mod Podge them on. Um, this this is just my little tip on how to do these dragon scales quickly and easily, so that they're not they don't you don't have to charge a million dollars for your time. Or if you only charge let's say fifty bucks for the cup, you're getting paid like fifteen cents an hour. Um, this speeds up the process a lot faster. Usually I only do fish cups or dragon cups as labors of love for family members, unless somebody wants to pay me a lot uh, <laughs> because they're beautiful, but they are time consuming. Even this, even doing it this way with the stickers, it's still time consuming compared to some of my other cups. Now that one, I, I'm just going to easily replace But see, I'm not stressing out. I'm just kind of lining it up and dropping it down, lining it up and dropping it down. If it's slightly crooked, I don't worry about it. There's so many scales, no one's gonna notice one weird scale. I mean, not that it's weird, it's just if something is slightly to the left or to the right, nobody's gonna notice that. So that we're, we're just gonna keep doing this process individually, one, 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 all the way around the cup until I get back up onto the smooth part, all right? So you can see how I'm just individually laying, grabbing, laying, grabbing, laying, and I fill it into the spot. So here's my tip. You don't wanna start at the top and work down because you're covering up all the tips. You wanna start from the bottom, have that tip pointed down, and then all the tips are sticking out. If you lay the first one here and then lay over it, you're making, you're gonna have all these these parts sticking out, and that's not the top of the dragon scale. This is, the, this is not the part of the dragon scale you want poking out, this is. So that's why you start at the bottom and work your way up, all right? I'm gonna throw you guys onto high speed while I get over this hump and that way you could just watch me place each one so you can see the process but you don't have to tediously watch me do it for 20 minutes. Okay guys, I feel like you've got the good gist of what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna finish out this part of the cup and then I'm gonna base paint it white and we will be back. So I don't feel like, I feel like you've seen enough now of me applying these, you get the idea. Piece them together, use your individuals where you need to. But really you saw, it took me about the same amount of time to do this small section here as it did to do the whole rest of the cup because it's a lot more tedious right on the ridge. But by doing it with the individuals you can, you. Um, combat that going up and over the hump um, and then you just get f flying on the top part so I'm gonna finish this up paint it base white and we will be right back all right guys we are back you can see I've got it on my drying rack it is only about a quarter of an inch away from being on the ground but it's not touching the ground which is perfect that's exactly what I want um, you can see uh, all of these scales are on there and I base painted it white and I'm trying to find a, a one where the scale is wonky I know they were started in the bottom one well see you can't even tell so I'm trying to find one where you can see where the scale is off but once it's painted and stuff you can't see it at all so I, I can't even point out a flaw to you because I can't see one so now we're gonna paint with the color shift paint I bought this one brand new because my other one is so ugly and I didn't want it on camera because <laughs> I've got paint and epoxy globs all over it so we are just gonna peel the top off this one. 
scrape it, put it to the side. Okay, then I'm just gonna dip back and forth because there's nothing, there's no glitter or anything to contaminate this. So I'm gonna move my hanger off to the side here just for now and we're gonna put my hand in it to paint. And you're not trying to get full coverage on your first paint. Go from top to bottom. You're gonna end up probably doing three to four coats to get co good coverage. Um, I don't try to drive myself nuts and try to get it all done perfect in one coat. So just focus on getting a coat on there. Doesn't have to be perfect. Once I get it um, pretty covered, then I go back through and do one nice smooth swoop up so I don't have all the as many brush strokes. But to start, I'm just kind of mushing it in to make sure I get it in down into the scales really good. Okay. All right, I'm gonna get this painted for you guys and we will be right back. You see how I'm doing it. Just try to focus on getting one long, get, get it in there and smoosh it into the, into the veins of the uh, scales and then just give one long swoop down, one long swoop up and just try to get it as smooth as possible. All right, we're gonna finish the other half and we'll be back. So now we have our first coat on. Um, again, just nice, smooth. I got it all the paint on and then went back through and did a nice, smooth brush stroke all the way down to get an even brush stroke. So right now, these brush strokes are kind of distracting from the scales. And the first time I did this, I was like, ah! Oh! And I was going to strip the cup and I thought, no, screw it. I'm just going to keep painting and get through it. I'll just turn it into a different type of cup. You won't be able to see the scales, but it'll be like a pretty color and coverless shift and da-da. So I kept painting and doing the layers and layers and layers. And I realized as the more layers I got on, the more you actually saw the stripes because the brush strokes started going away and it started being a solid color of the uh, color shift. And um, so it started showing those scales back through because there was no more lines and brush strokes left to um, have to try to look through to see the scales. So for now, yeah, it looks a little wonky. And um, you can't see the scales as, I mean, I can see them perfectly fine. I'm not sure if you're catching them on the camera, but um, they, they do start to pop back out once you uh, start adding more and get the color more smooth. It's the brush strokes at this point that kind of de deters from it. So I've got the bottom painted, da -da. so, and I've painted the lip really well. And I, what I realized is I didn't even do it on camera and I should have. When I get to the top, I keep going all the way to the top and then I take my super sharp X-Acto knife and I cut all the extra that's coming up over the lip. So that's how you get the nice smooth lip with the scales going all the way to the top. So see some of these scales, you can see it's only a very little tip of the scale and I cut the rest of it off. All right, so we're gonna let this dry probably overnight. It will actually probably dry for 24 hours because it's Monday and tomorrow I work in LA. So I gotta do my big giant commute tomorrow. So I won't probably get to this until Wednesday for the next coat. So we will do a couple more coats and uh, we will be back and see you guys soon. We are to the fun part. We can start adding glitter. You can see the cup is now really well covered. You, like I said, you really start to not see those brush strokes the more and more layers you get on there. I have six layers, guys. So it's a very thin layer each time um, because you don't want to build up and get, hide your scales. So this one, you can see the color shift from like the, like almost uh, pale blue to the green blue. It's really cool. It's uh, very iridescent and gorgeous, um, but you can still really see the scales through it. And it's just really, really fun cup. I'm trying to kind of maneuver the cup so you guys can see it from all different angles as the lights catch it. So now I want to go in and add um, just some little flair to this, um, little glitter bits. This is going to be more of a girl cup than a guy cup. Um, my joke is I, I am the mother of dragons. I have three dragons. And the back of my car even says, I'm the mother of dragons and has three dragons. So this is going to be my mother of dragons cup. So what I'm going to do is use this tiny little brush. Ooh, there's one little hair sticking out on the brush. 
Hold on, I gotta cut that off. I don't want that to throw off my whole thing. Ooh. Okay, I had a little fuzz. I don't want to throw it off because this is kind of a precise thing. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna make some of these uh, scales glittery. So I'm gonna paint my Mod Podge perfectly on one of these scales. This is why you use a tiny little brush, guys. Whoops. And you want it to be, ooh, my brush slipped. There we go. Boop, 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 boop. This is gonna be the tedious part, but it's also really fun because it makes the cup so glittery. All right, so see, I got one, one perfectly painted scale. Uh, Mod Podge tends to dry faster than I can work, so I do one scale at a time. So I've got my little paper. I'm going to work in the aquas first. And there we go, a fun little blue scale. And then I'm just going to keep going, and every once in a while I'm just going to dot one on there and add a new one. I'm not going to make them all over the place. They're just going to be an occasional little pop not a full-blown glitter cup. It's just gonna be a little accent to have all these little glitter scales poking out. The funny thing is I am not an artist. I can make a gorgeous cup, but I can't draw off at all. So that's why I have to keep wiping some away because I do not have a steady hand for that. Okay. There we go. Oh my gosh, I'm in love with it. Okay, so I don't know where I got cut off. My phone rang. I forgot to put it on airplane mode and it shut down the video. So um, I'm gonna do this in high speed because you guys don't need to tediously, you guys get the idea. You're just gonna kind of dot the, the different uh, glitters around for the different scales. And I'm gonna do that. I'll put you guys in high speed um, just so you don't have to tediously watch me do all that. And we will be back. All right, guys, so now you can see the, the glitter, pale blue, kind of turquoisey color on there. Um, I was going to go with dark blue and purple as my other colors. And like I say, my tutorials are always kind of a work in progress because I have an idea, a concept of what I want to do, and then I kind of change my mind. So I'm actually going to do with white. I'm going to go lighter colors, not darker colors. So the next uh, group of scales I put on is going to be the white ones. All right, guys, so you just watched me in high speed just apply a couple of these glitter scales. I spotted them around. Like I said, I was going to go with a dark theme, but I changed my mind. I think I'm going to go light on this cup. So this is just adds a fun little bit of texture to the cup, to the scales, to make a few of them pop out and stand out and look really pretty and add some little glitter because I love my glitter. Um, all right, I'm going to let this, the Mod Podge, to completely dry on this before we do the next step. Uh, the next step will be to spray paint it. Um, with white clear coat spray paint just to lock in this glitter so it doesn't move and transition when um, we epoxy it. All right, guys, so I'm going to let this one just chill and we will be back. So you see the cup here? We've got it all done. The Mod Podge is dry. It looks like it just has a few really cool little uh, colored white and blue scales. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word. I was going to say decals. Scales. Say the word decals too many times a day. So now we're just gonna take a very soft brush and brush off any of the excess glitter. 
because I want it to only really be right where those spots are. I don't want it, this to be a huge glitter cup. I just want little glitter accents. So I'm just brushing off very gently any excess glitter that I see. All right, boop, 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 boop. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this outside. There's a little there, whoop, missed a little. I'm gonna take this outside and put a, probably three to four coats of clear coat spray over the top, mainly just to, I have brushed it off really well, but just to really contain that glitter and not let it go everywhere once I start hitting it with epoxy, um, I'm gonna do this clear spray paint. Um, just to coat it and seal in that glitter. All right, we'll be right back after I do a couple layers of clear spray paint. You can use any brand you want, any finish you want. It doesn't seem to make a difference. They say you should use matte because it grips better, but epoxy grabs onto everything regardless of the finish. So you can do um, satin, matte, gloss. It doesn't matter. They all look exactly the same under epoxy. So whatever you've got in the clear coat spray paint, use that. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, guys, we are back. And this cup has been covered in spray paint. Um, this, the clear spray paint was just to keep the glitter in place. Um, I'm going to mix a very big batch of epoxy because I've got four other cups I've got of epoxy and I'm going to do them all at the same time so that I'll just be wearing my mask anyway, so I might as well. Uh, let's see, we are going to mix, I filled up my medicine, uh, little measurement cups already. And A is a little bit low, so I'm going to fill it up. Um, so I've got these measured out in part A and part B. If you've never worked with epoxy before and you're going to try one of these cups for the first time and this is the first video of mine you've seen, uh, you need to make sure when you're working with these cups that you're using an FDA compliant resin. There are lots of resins out there. You just need to make sure yours is food safe and FDA compliant because people are going to be putting their mouths on the cups and you don't want there to be anything toxic where they're going to be putting their mouth. So uh, I have, in the drop-down menu on this uh, tutorial, there's going to be a whole list of the epoxies that I use that are FDA approved and safe. Um, there's, I think there's four that I like and work with for different reasons. I know you guys always ask me why I use them for different things. I'm going to do a whole tutorial on that. Um, so what you're going to do is the brands that I've posted are mixed equal parts. Some epoxies are mixed two to one. But what I use is equal parts. So I have them measured out A and B to equal parts. You, with the epoxies, you mix them together and a chemical reaction begins. And that is why I'm wearing a chemical mask because I don't want to breathe anything like that in. And I'm wearing my nitrile gloves because they, uh, the epoxy chemicals cannot go through the gloves. So this stuff is pretty gnarly when you're working with it and it's curing. But once it's cured, it's completely safe. You can eat off this um, and you can use it on the surfaces, touch it with your hands. It's not a problem. It's just while it's curing, it's creating... A chemical reaction oh my gosh you guys so we might have a visitor and I apologize already I have my studio doors wide open because it's pretty warm here today and my cat just came in because he saw the door open and he is a super duper friendly cat so he's probably he's oh no no psst. sorry he is <laughs> he's super friendly and he's gonna try to climb in my lap so I can, I can already sense he's gonna be in this shot um, all right guys I'm just gonna stir this up I stir up very very vigorously a lot of uh, people heat this up. They put it on like a tray of warm. I don't do that because I use my torch to pop my bubbles. This is the most effective thing you could possibly do for bubbles. It's absolutely fantastic. So I pour those two measurements into my Dixie cup and I get it stirred up. You want to stir it really well. You want to scrape the sides really, really well uh, because you don't want any, if you get a section where there's only part A or part B that hasn't been mixed in, that part of the epoxy will not cure and it will make a whole mess of problems for your cup. So you want to measure it out in equal parts. If you have a hard time, this is a big a batch, by the way, you guys. You will only ever really have that much. But like I said, I'm doing, I think, five cups. This one plus the others. So I'm going to just do this one and jump over there and do them. So I'm big, max, m mixing a giant batch. Okay, so you see how I scrape the sides? I scrape the spoon off a couple times, and I just stir vigorously. And I got a million bubbles in there, but I don't care because I'm going to pop them with my, uh, the CO2 from that fire of that torch. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to put you guys on high speed and get this applied. I use my silicone makeup brush to apply. It helps keep my gloves. You can see these gloves are well used. I use them for probably a week or so before I throw them out. Um, so this little brush saves my gloves. Um, I just try to save on supplies where I can. All right, guys, I'm going to put you on high speed and we will jump on this thing. All right, so as you guys saw there, I applied the epoxy all over the cup. I always check the lip, make sure it's really well covered, get my bottom really, really well. 
Then once I kind of look and do an overview of it, and I see that the uh, cup has been pretty well covered. Sorry, I just, there we go. There's a little spot right there I wanted to get. Once you see the epoxy, it's pretty well covered, then you take your torch and run the torch over it really quick. You move quickly. If you, if you pause too long, you will immediately burn this uh, epoxy. So you saw me just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth in a quick motion. And all the, the fire, the heat, and the CO2 off the flame draws those bubbles out and gets rid of any micro bubbles or anything you see in there. So you just have this beautiful, I call it glass, over your scales. All right, guys? So that's for the first epoxy uh, layer for this cup. We're going to let this cure completely, and then I'm going to show you something super rad that you're going to do on this cup. That I'm super excited. I can't even hardly wait to get to that step with you guys. All right, we will see you guys soon. All right, guys, we are back with the dragon cup. We have the coats of epoxy on it. Uh, we just got the one coat because we're going to keep adding more coats and I don't want it to be super duper heavy. Um, so we're just do the one coat over it to really uh, seal in that uh, glitter and get it ready for this next step. So what we're going to do now is the 3D effect. I have my chemical mask on because I've started the epoxy over here. So this is just A and B mixed together. I've got 15 grams total milligram, milliliters, uh, mLs so together. So seven and a half of each A and B. You will need for this step uh, your molds to make your 3D image, a silicone mat, some rubber bands, and whatever colors you want to mix. So this will be the first time you guys see me work with mica powders. Uh, I, I use them all the time, but I haven't used them in a tutorial yet, which I just occurred to me. I'm like, oh, they've never seen me use micas. So the mica is just a very shimmery, kind of like opalescent color that's going to add just the extra shimmer to this part of the tutorial. Sorry, my kids are... Having a lot of fun. It sounds terrible, but that's her happy screen. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to sound like Darth Vader during this part, guys, because I've got to wear my chemical mask because of this epoxy. So I've got it mixed together real well, part A and part B. Uh, then I'm going to take my pinata. This is pinata brand. It's just the white alcohol ink. It's uh, just epoxy coloring because I want these uh, to be white. So I'm going to add a couple drips of the white. All right, and then I am going to take, let's use this, oops, and take my X-Acto knife, and I'm going to scoop some of this white opalescent powder out of here with my X-Acto knife and just drip it in there. So that's the mica powder, guys. You can see, I, I don't know if you can see the opalescence on my, uh, little exacto knife there. I'm going to take my stick again. We're going to stir that all into the epoxy. And you can see the, the shimmer coming out really well. Bring that up for you guys. It just looks like, like an opal. It's very, very pretty with those mica powders and that dye. So you can do just one or the other, but I just like to overdo it, I guess. Um, and get the real good solid white color and the opal color. All right, so then you're gonna take your uh, silicone molds. I have dragons, I will tell you guys where to buy these. I will have it all in the description box below. These are not very expensive. I think I paid two or three dollars total for each one. Um, I bought two with the intent of using one and giving one away as a prize in my Facebook group. And then I did a poll of what you guys would want to see in uh, 3D Dragon Cup was the like, number one response from you guys. So here we are. I'm going to use them both. Sorry, guys, you don't get one of these in the Facebook group. <laughs> it's being used in this tutorial today. Um, okay, so we're going to take this. I have way too much because I'm, I'm doing something else with this, actually, on a different cup. Um, and you're just going to drizzle in very carefully into the mold. I do a little bit at a time because this is a very detailed mold. I'm going to just very, very carefully drip it in there. I don't want it all over the place. Let it fill in the cracks. If you get too much, it doesn't matter, guys. You can sand this down. And you'll see, I'll show you some techniques, some little tricks. Do, 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 do. You just want to get the epoxy kind of in that area. And then you can use a toothpick or a weeding tool 
to work it. Sorry, guys, I forget I have to talk extra loud. Sorry if that was too quiet. So you guys got to just carefully drip this in, and then you can use a toothpick or a weeding tool to really work it into all the little details of the dragon. All right, so I'm going to leave that one. We're going to go ahead and fill this one. So we're just making some 3D dragons, guys, with this, uh, the epoxy and the, the mixture to put on the side of this cup. But I will show you, you have to do a special, tip, a special step to make sure that this will go on the cup. Otherwise, it's just a flat dragon, and you have to uh, make it curve. So I will show you guys how to get this epoxy curved around the cup as it cures. Do, do, do. Sorry, this is tedious. I usually don't make you guys watch this, but I had already started and I realized I should put you on speed up on the time lapse. Okay, so there I'm just filling that in. Well, that worked out perfect. I was going to show you how to fill in all the cracks, but as I sat and did this one, that one filled in. All right, so you're going to take your uh, popsicle stick and just go flush with the dragon and wipe out any of the extra. Okay, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfectly flat or whatever on the back. We're going to mess with that a little bit. Just kind of get the, any extra. You just, you don't want this bulging is the key. Okay, and I'm just going to go back in. I see that I can scrape a little too much there. Got a little too deep right there. I pushed too hard, guys. You don't want to push too hard because you don't want to take too much out. You want to just take just enough to make it flush. So I could see that I had pushed in too hard when I scraped. So I'm just adding little drops where it looks like it's kind of low on epoxy. So you can see all the epoxy up here. That won't matter. That, when, once this dries, that'll go away. It'll just crack off and be no big deal. Okay. All right. Okay, so we are going to actually let these sit. I'm going to check them in about an hour and a half. We're just gonna let them sit just like this, guys. For the next step, you're gonna really need this um, silicone mat and your rubber band, so be ready. Um, I had this ready in case I had to push some of the epoxy in there and wipe it off, but I didn't need to. It filled in the cracks just perfectly. Um, all right, so we will come back in a couple hours and test these and see if they're ready to work on the next step. Here we go, sorry, just a little drizzle. I'm being a little OCD. Sorry, guys, I don't normally make you watch me be tedious and crazy. All right, guys, we'll be back in a couple hours. Okay, guys, I am so sorry, but I'm going to be a little muffled. I still have my uh, epoxy mask on one because this is curing epoxy, and I, I just got a whole round of cups going again for the day. So I'm going to sound a little bit like Darth Vader, and it might be a little hard to hear because I've got to wear my uh, chemical mask in my space right now. And uh, I don't have my mic on because my phone is dying, and that's what I use to record you guys, for you guys. And uh, it's dying, so I have to have it plugged in so I can't have my mic set up and hooked onto me. So I'm going to try to talk really loud so that you guys get picked up. But also my cricket is working in the back overtime. I'm so slammed right now. But we have to do this step right now because these are at the point where they need to be worked with. And if we don't do this step, these are going to harden and they won't fit on the cup. So what I'm going to do is show you guys. Hold on, let me. How we're going to wrap these and get them to stay on the cup and shape the cup. All right, I'm going to bring in a second silicone pad. I'm going to place these on the pad. So I want to show you guys. You know they're ready to, to, to do this next step when you can hold them up. It's been about three hours since I did these. And you can see that they're pliable. I can bend it, but they're, the, the liquid isn't flowing out of the mat, uh, uh, silicone mold right now. So it's just kind of staying in place. Now, if you want to still be pliable, you want to still, for it to still be bendable. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take your silicone pad and you're going to lay it around your cup. I'm going to line it up with the top of this. I happen to have a very large pad. You don't need to use one this big. Um, so then you're going to have your rubber bands ready. I bought this pack of rubber bands at the dollar store. It has all different sizes and these, they're like the double size ones. These are perfect for this, okay? So you're going to take your molds and you're going to place them face down next to each other on the cup, on the silicone. The silicone is very important, otherwise it will stick like crazy and you are going to rubber band this down, okay? 
with lots of rubber bands. You want lots of points of contact on this thing. Okay, guys, and just like that. So if you pick up your mold in that silicone, I mean, in the uh, epoxy, it moves. It's not ready. And even when it, if, even if it looks like it's not moving, give it another 20 minutes. <laughs> That's what I always say, just, just for good measure. Okay, then you're going to take this cup. You're going to put on another silicone pad. You want it to face down. Just because if it does move, I would rather it go into the mold than all over my cup. So we're going to leave this sitting here like this tonight. I'm going to prop it up. And we're gonna let this cure overnight. I'm gonna prop it up with something bigger. Let's see, we will use, we'll use my my tape. There, that way, no, well, that's too high. There, that way it's kind of level. The silicone molds are underneath, pressed up against the silicone pad. That way when they cure and they're curved, I can just unpeel them and there'll be a nice curved dragon. Okay, so I'm gonna do these two and then I gotta do one more because I gotta do three because three dragons, I got three babies. So I got to have three dragons on my cup. So I will get these two done and tomorrow I'll start a third mold, do the exact same thing. And then we'll, we'll be back. I'll show you how to fix them to the cup and how to detail out this cup and finish all our fun little details. All right, guys, we will be back tomorrow. All right, guys, this has been curing for 24 hours. Um, I didn't get back to it. I've been so busy doing all these other tutorials and fun stuff with you guys in the group. So here we go, the unveiling. We're going to take the... Um, silicone mold off so these should be pretty well cured in an arc shape they're going to be really thin this is a very delicate beautiful thing okay oh they're gorgeous gorgeous that's so so pretty and the opalescent i don't know if it's coming across in cam on camera but the opalescence is absolutely beautiful in these because it just gives them just enough shimmer let's see if i can put it against the other white background so you guys can see it better. It gives just enough shimmer uh, that it just adds a little texture almost to the to the image. So there's a lot of this little extra stuff, guys. You can either just peel this away. If some of it, if it's thinner, you can just peel it off or you can go with an X-Acto knife. I'm gonna go with an X-Acto knife because I don't wanna mess it up and I'm just gonna clean around the edges. I will grab my X-Acto knife and do that on camera on high speed for you guys so you can kind of see me do it. Um, but these, and now if you take these, they will sit perfectly against this cup because they are, were molded to fit the shape of the cup. So I don't know if you guys can see how tight to the cup that is. All right, so let's um, get set up and I will show you how to clean those edges. Okay, so there, that took me less than five minutes, guys, to do both of them. So it's really easy because people have asked me, like, why do you not just clean the back of this mold better? Well, the more you fiddle with these molds and the more you wipe away, you actually end up taking epoxy out of here. It's inevitable. Um, so I've, I've learned that just to not fiddle with it. Um, that it's super easy to clean up the image. Sorry, I'm just scraping. It's OCD. I, I my mold is dirty. Got to clean it. Um, it's just uh, it's a lot easier to just scrape it out with the Exacto knife than it is to try to clean this all up perfectly to not get that because as you're cleaning it, you're touching and bumping that epoxy and slowly taking a little bit away with you. And then when you try to re-add it, you it drizzle and make a mess and, you know, so I just put it on there, do one good wipe just so it is thin. I wipe it even and then make sure, and so that anything that left is very thin. So this is like thinner than a piece of paper. It's just really thin. So it just comes away from the dragon really, really easy. So I've got these two dragons. I've got to make a third dragon because I need three because um, I'm the mother of three dragons. Ha 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 ha. So funny. Um, and so I need my third dragon. So I'm going to, I've only got two molds, so I'm going to make a third dragon and I'm going to fill in these holes and then I'm going to come back and we'll keep adding more and more awesome flourish and details to this cup. All right, guys, stay tuned. Okay, guys, I am going to mix my third one. I'm going to make this one gray. Um, I'm going to add gun metal. This is going to be the mixative gun metal from Ranger. Uh, they sell this at Hobby Lobby in a mix. I believe it comes with rose gold and one other one. 
Um, it's really pretty, maybe it's regular gold, and uh, you can use your coupon, but I want to show you guys this as I'm doing this, so you can see how much, when you do the, um, the uh, micas on top of a dark surface, it really shows up the opalescence. So that's why if you do like a Northern Lights cup, you wanna definitely have a black background. I don't know if you guys are catching that in the, in the light there, how much more opalescence, just having it, it's like gray opalescent, but the gray makes the opalescent pop out even more so. The white is the least. So the darker the base color that you use your micas with and over, the more opalescent and like color shift that you'll get through it. Okay, so I'm gonna move that off to the side. I still used white for that one. I had my white dropper here just in case I got crazy and wanted to try to do a swirl, but I'm really loving the way this one looks. So I'm gonna move it off to the side. And the reason I'm doing this one different, guys, is because my triplets are two identicals and a fraternal. So I think it'll be funny to have two white ones and then a slightly gray one that's um, gonna be opalescent from the mica powder. So I get asked a lot of questions about the mica powder, so I'm starting to add it in the different ways that I use it in my tutorials. Because you ask, you guys on my Facebook channel, we are talking about a lot of micas right now. Do, 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 do. So I'm just slowly working this into this dragon. You can already see the opalescence is just already just exploding. Whoops, not on my mat. I'll have to clean that up. That's a good point. Here's a little, here's my little tip and trick for this tutorial. If you get epoxy on something you don't want it to, while it's still wet, just get something saturated in alcohol and wipe it up. It'll come right up. So that's what I'll do with that. Before it dries, I will grab that up with alcohol, rubbing alcohol, 91% rubbing alcohol, guys. Pretty much in this craft, doing anything with tumblers, all you'll use is the 91% alcohol. I can't even think of a reason you would use something else, so. Just drizzling this in. Again, you can use a toothpick to help guide this into the spots. And there we go. Okay, I have a little tiny dab left over. That's gonna go in a button. So if you don't know what a button is, this is a button. This is the Little Ian Rose button. We're also talking about those a lot in my group because every, on the first of the month, I award the top five contributors, contributors in our Facebook group, and they get a button and some happy mail that comes usually with glitter or something good, and then they are to, every time they post in the group, they put their button in the picture. And that way we can all recognize that they're big contributors to the group and um, that they answer a lot of questions, they're super helpful, and it's just a way to acknowledge people who are very active in our group. Okay, I'm gonna take this and just wipe off a tiny bit like we did on the other one. Um, no, I'm actually going to leave this one. It looks pretty good. I'm just going to clean this up on the side. All right, guys, we are going to let this cure. I'm going to do the exact same thing as I did before. I'm going to wrap it, um, rubber band it to the cup and let it cure overnight. And then we will have our three dragons. All right, guys, this one has cured for over 24 hours. We're going to do the reveal to see that opalescent gray dragon. These are so fun. Okay, we're gonna peel that away. Oh, the opalescence is already rad, I can tell. Very carefully, because these are so delicate. Pull that out. Oh, now I'm kind of wishing I'd done them all that color, because they're gonna stand on the cup real well. But this is cute, because I have two identical twins and a fraternal. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing with this one, you guys, with the X-Acto knife, and just get in there and trim all this excess away, and we will come back and finish the rest of the fun flourishes. All right, guys, we are back. So. Oh, I have my three dragons, and I love the white, and I love my opalescent gray-purple one. But ultimately, I was going to do them this way because I have the two twins and the, the, the two identical and the fraternal of my triplets. But I don't like the two, the two colors on the cup. It just It's just a personal preference. So I think I'm going to either go back and make... I can't decide which one I like better, the white or the gray. So I'm, I, I'm probably just going to go back and make one more white dragon and save this for another cup. Maybe I'll make them, I'm making them dragon egg uh, sippy cups and I'll put this, I'll do th those dragons this color. Um, so I'm going to go back and do one more white just for aesthetics of the cup. But like I said, I can't decide if I like the contrasting because my decal is going to be gray. So I can't decide if I want the gray dragons or the white. So you guys will find out in a minute. <laughs> after I've redone it and decided and we'll be back, but I'm going to do um, my decal. I'm going to, I call this direct um, weeding. 
So this is when you have, if you look at this decal, some of these lines in here are very, very intricate and it's just easier to just slap this sucker on and it's almost like you've seen my video on reverse weeding and this is called, I call this direct weeding. So I'm gonna place this on as a full piece. I'm not gonna weed it. I'm just gonna line it up. I guess I should have looked at the cup to make sure that's where exactly I wanted it, but it's all the same. So it doesn't matter. Okay, so then you're just gonna rub it. You don't really matter if you rub the edges. You just wanna make sure you rub over the words and the part that you want to stick to the cup. The rest doesn't matter, we're peeling it away anyway. So you're gonna, this is my tip on this cup, guys. Well, there's a lot of tips on this cup with all the 3D stuff, but this is my how to weed a direct weed. And we're gonna pull this up, pull our transfer tape away and the, everything should stay. We cut a couple of those little details came away with it, but we want those anyway, out anyway. And then you're gonna pick up the edge and you're just gonna pull away and the sticker, well, I didn't rub enough. Okay, I'm gonna rub some more. As long as the decal has really good contact with the cup, it'll stay down. Unless you cut on the wrong setting and it's not cut all the way through. That might be a thing as well. And if you that keeps happening to you guys, if you keep um, not getting a cut all the way through, just set your um, dial on your Cricut to uh, custom and then select like outdoor premium vinyl and put the pressure on more and maybe even double cut it. I talk about double cutting in my some of my tutorials. Double cutting, you can see this is, so now you see this is leaving the word behind and just peeling away the outer edge and I don't have to hand weed all these little details. Um, so double cutting guys is when you put um, your vinyl in your machine and cut it and then when it comes to unload it and the unload button is flashing, don't un unload it. Just push the cut button again and it will cut it twice in the exact identical spots. Um, so if you're not, if you're having a trouble, like some of those fine, really fine uh, details on vinyl need to be cut that way. Um, they just need to double cut to be able to lift them and weed them real easy. Oops, I'm kind of screwing this up for you guys. So just kind of work it around, pull that off, grab all the little bits that stick up. Okay, and then you're gonna have some stuff left behind. That's gonna be basically what's in between your letters that you're gonna have to go up and get. But you just grab, that's so cute. People laugh at me as the mother of dragons. I have this all over my car, being the triplets with the, with the girls, it's really funny. Um, and I have super platinum blonde hair, so <laughs> I'm Khaleesi. Uh, all right, so then you can see you just go in there and put your little tip of your weeding tool underneath the vinyl and lift it up a bit and then just slide it out. So much easier than regular weeding, guys. It's just another option. You don't have to do it this way. If you want to, if you like weeding, some people find the other way of weeding to be very relaxing. I used to, I actually used to really like to weed. I would just do mandalas for the fun of it. And then I got super busy. And so I still like doing it, but now I just have to do everything with a time efficiency. And this way is very easy to quickly pull these little things out. So you're just going in and getting these little details and they just come lifted right away. All right, guys, I'm not gonna make you watch me do this entire thing because that is tedious and boring. But you see, we got the decal on there now. I'm gonna make a, uh, my dragons all one color and we will be back. I'll show you how to fix those to the cup. All right, guys, here we go. My bright lights make that kind of hard to see, uh, but I am the mother of dragons. There is my decal. And as I was still trying to contemplate and decide what I want to do with my dragons, I got super inspired. I do think I'm gonna keep them white because I was comparing them with the color of my decal. And I actually really like the, the gray and was gonna go with gray. And then I was like, ooh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna remake these. See, uh, again, you guys, I have a one track that I'm going for on a tutorial and then my brain never stops going. And so I get inspired by things and all of a sudden this just popped into my head. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make them uh, white and opal. And I'm also gonna add this teal glowing pigment powder. And so it's gonna be glow in the dark and it will glow the same color as the cup when it's in the dark and it will have the three dragons and it's gonna look super, super duper cool. So I chose this uh, teal glow powder pigment 
You'll see how this works. I will make sure I show this one. I, I did a glow cup, guys, and I completely forgot to photograph it glowing, so I'm gonna be posting that one. It's my four color ombre. So I'm gonna take a picture of that tonight when it gets really, really dark, and I get a really good glow out of it, and I'm gonna post it in the Facebook group but um, so you guys can see it, because I completely forgot to add that to my tutorial um, at the end. But this is um, in a powder. So this is um, glow-in-the-dark powder. I will have a link to this in the description menu um, under this tutorial. I found a really, really good deal on this, and so that's why I'm gonna link you guys, um, and it comes with all these colors. So these colors glow in these different pigments. So this one's a blue glow, this one has a sky blue glow, this is a dark blue glow. Then you have Ke Kelly green, or Kelly yellow green, um, a gold glowing gold, uh, lemon glow, red grapefruit glow, kiwi, and violet and orange. So there's a whole pack of all these fun different color glow pigments um, that you add to your epoxy and it makes it a glow. So this is gonna be a 3D glow feature. I'm super excited. I'm, I don't know why I didn't think of this in the beginning, but um, now I'm glad that I kind of had that little happy accident um, where I thought I wanted the two and the one and it made me kind of rethink this. So here we go, guys. Um, I'm gonna just do this real quick. You guys have already seen me mix and fill this. Um, with this, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of the powder to my mixture to make these. I can only make two at a time, so this is gonna be a little bit of, pro you'll see me in a couple days after I've finished all these dragons. Um, and so we'll be back. I'm still gonna add the white pinata pigment. I'm going to, like I said, I'm gonna add a little, like half a teaspoon of the pearlescent mica, and I'm gonna add, because I still want it, when it's not glowing, to still have that shimmer on the cup. And then at night, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of this glow powder, then mix it all and put it in here. So we have glow dragons. Woo, woo, shimmery, glowing dragons. So, all right, guys, um, I'm gonna get these started. Like I said, you don't need to watch me do this part. I just want to tell you what the process was and what I was doing and what I was adding and let you know I'll link everything for you. And I will get these done and we'll be back. Okay, guys, we got it all in there. You can see it's a slightly different. It's a little off-white, but it's still beautiful. Um, that is from the teal glow powder because it's not pure white, but I still added the white um, pinata uh, color to make it very pure white, as white as we could get it. Now, in this one, I'm going to guess that this is the uh, adding this glow to it because it's got a lot more bubbles than normal. So I want to show you guys, you can actually torch on silicone. You don't want to, I mean, you don't want to, it's just like torching your cup. If you hold it in one place, yes, you're going to burn it. But if you keep moving, silicone has got a high, high, high flash point. Um, that's why you can use this for baking. People bake in silicone cups um, in their oven. So it can handle the heat. And we're just going to torch it and just, just like that, guys. Just, just a touch of that. And it took all the bubbles away. And you saw how fast I did it. It is not a slow process. you got to move um, to get those bubbles. Uh, so like I said, you just, just that fast and it catches all the bubbles. The CO2 in the flame is what removes the bubbles. It's pretty awesome. It's a science thing. Um, and like I said, this is heat tolerant. I've got it on. I didn't want to do it on my rug, light myself on fire, but we're on a silicone mat with my silicone molds. So now I'm just going to let these cure, um, for what the four hours. And then I'm going to wrap them on my cup, just like I did previously in the tutorial. Then I'm going to pop them out, put them to the side, and I'm going to start a, a third one. Um, that way I have my three dragons because I want them all to be glowing. I can't leave one out. All right, guys, so we will come back when I've got all three ready and we're going to affix them to the cup. I just want to show you that little trick with the heat and the torch. Okay, guys, so you see my little trick that I have to hold these in place. I put the rubber bands around and that's going to, one, it's going to show me I was able to kind of line them up and put like the one right in the middle and kind of eyeball it and... I could measure it, but this is fine. I, it's my own personal cup, mother of dragons. So the, the, the rubber bands are gonna be useful in holding them in place so you know exactly where you're gonna super glue them down. It's also gonna hold them, instead of me having to sit and hold this dragon until the glue sets in, um, it's gonna hold the dragon for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna maybe use my, an extra glove as a mat because this tube. And I'm gonna squeeze a little bit onto the end of my popsicle stick and I'm just gonna lift up and put it under there and drop it down, all right? Just a little bit, it doesn't have to be a ton. It's just gotta basically tack it down until we can get epoxy over it. So, whoops, sorry, lift it up, squish it under there, slide it out, and drop it down, make sure it's, in line, perfect. Okay, so we'll do this one. It's just a little glue. Like I said, it's just enough to tack it down. 
before you super uh, epoxy under it because once you epoxy under it, then it becomes permanent. Whoopsie, there I did, I touched my finger and that is exactly why I put on gloves. Okay, put it under there. Sorry, just lining it up, making sure it's laying down right where I want it to. Swoop that underneath there, tuck it down. So far I haven't had an issue. If it squeezes out the side, guys, just leave it because uh, you can't see it under the epoxy, this specific brand, because it's, so, it's very clear and it dries very clear. So it just disappears underneath the epoxy. My fingernails are, there we go. All right, I'm gonna put the cap back on. And then I'm just gonna make sure that they're lined up exactly where I want them. Those two are pretty good. You have a couple minutes of workability time with the um, Omni Stick. Not very many minutes, so you do have to move relatively quickly just to make sure you're getting it where you want. Okay, so I'm gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes and I will come back and show you guys what we got. And get it under epoxy. All right, guys, there she is. So beautiful. Um, she's got the Three dragons uh, glued onto her with the Omni glue, and then it's got two coats of epoxy over the top. I did have the small fail with heating up one dragon too much, trying to d hone in on one bubble, and I have learned my lesson. Never do that. Just pop it with a pin <laughs> instead of going for it with heat. Um, and now, yep, it's just slowly turning. So I'm gonna turn off the light so you guys can see the glow feature. I don't know how well my camera's gonna adjust to just having the light turned off. So this will be interesting. <laughs> it looks awesome. Um, so that glow is the teal glow um, from that pigment powder that I showed you guys. And I was expecting my camera to try to adjust and maybe kick on the flash or something, but it didn't. So it looks amazing. It is trying to adjust and focus as those dragons come around. But you guys can see really, really well how amazing... And that was with the white alcohol ink, the white uh, mica powder, and then the glow, the teal that looks white, like white powder, but it's teal glowing uh, glow pigment. And so those dragons are so bright. And I only put them under a light to charge for maybe 60 seconds. Um, I'm always doing things as fast as I can uh, for time. But um, so they charged really, really well. I'm sure even if you let it charge for longer than 60 seconds, they would just light up the room. And it's not even completely dark in here, you guys. It's the middle of the day. I've got all my curtains and stuff closed. Um, but yeah, this one was super fun to do for you guys. It's my first cup that I've designed for myself, start to finish, just for me. Um, I always just kind of go, oh, I'm going to keep this one because it came out so pretty. And then I end up not keeping it because I sell it. So this is officially my first cup. Um, so you guys feel free to ask questions in the comments. It's best to ask questions within my Facebook group. Um, you're going to get a quicker answer that way. Um, I'm trying to catch all the uh, questions that happen here on YouTube, but I'm not that fast at them. So, um, because I'm getting questions from every direction. So please, please, please join my Facebook group. We do a lot of awesome stuff in there. You will not be sorry. There's tons of inspiration. I launch my videos there first. You'll see be first to see. Um, subscribe to the channel. I put out YouTube tutorials constantly, like every day or every other day. I try to keep you guys updated and keep ahead of the curve and show you really cool designs and new things to do. Um, and if you haven't checked out my other tutorials, check them out. 
There's some really, really rad stuff that is blowing people's minds. I'm super stoked to bring this to the Tumblr world. I love all you guys, my subscribers, you guys are rad, and we will see you on the next tutorial.